So yeah, knee deep into it, remove the trailer hitch, because that's in my way. Between where this mounts on the frame, that'll tie this in so we don't get it coming up if it's being pulled on down low. So that's the simple part of what we're doing today. We'll get to that. All right, so here's what we're dealing with. Right now it's only on two bolts. This is an odd angle, I bet. But two bolts that are on that part of the frame. I've removed the trailing hitch and it has one, two, three bolts plus this rivet that rivets the crossbar in. So I've got a clearance out for the crossbar. I always knew I was going to have to do this. I just didn't do it when I originally did the bumper. Laziness mostly. But, alright, you can see kind of what I'm after here. That's followed up for the rivet. I got a little bit of interference on that one. Alright, I got the bumper out and you can see how these all tie in. Ended up having to wallow these out. They'll get clamped in. That's for the rivet anyway, but those are for bolts. Since these are right in line with where the shackle points are, this ought to do pretty well of actually making sure this is passing force straight through to the frame. And it should keep it clamped in there pretty good. And I wanted to use angle iron, so I've got two planes of strength, because if you had just the one strap going in there with no on this plane, if it's just this plane, not this plane, that might bend. I don't want that. It's a lot harder to build. contests for beautiful welds but those are burned in on just about every side and I'll be the first to admit there's a lot of trash in this I couldn't get it as clean as I might have wanted and say because that was clean that's the most beautiful weld I've got but these things warm down here but they're in solid they're gonna hold that'll give me what I want and then next up is flip this turkey over and I'm closing off these holes. freaking pretty welds used pretty twice but they're beautiful for my capabilities you notice I was doing my best to keep it fairly level with the original bumper steel this thing's smoking hot had a pretty decent gap to fill on that side that may be low these are high enough to grind down it's a shame to be grinding something that good looking for me down but I do want to grind it down make it smooth as it was originally yeah, you can see what I did. Took this steel, $10, 36 inch piece of steel that I got at uh, Metal Supermarket yesterday. Sliced it down to what I need, grind the corners. It's still freaking hot from cutting. But you can see I do have gaps to fill in there and I'll get it as close as I can with the magnets and then tack it in. If I like where it's tacked, then I'll burn it in. But obviously I'm not going to remove this stuff in here. I'm going to leave it. So here's the hardest part about this whole operation, is these studs on a flag nut, they're on a big piece of bar. I pushed them up in there so we could be able to slide this in, but now getting them back out. I just spent 30 minutes on that side doing that one. You do not have a lot of room to get up in there. That side I had, yeah, this has got wiring and junk in my way. That side I had access up in there that I get a finger on it. I don't know if I can this side. So I'm playing around with a magnet and a wire to see.
see if I can get them back in. But the problem is you can actually rotate them 360 in there. So, difficult part if you're trying to sandwich something in between that. If it was up to me, I would have had... Probably should have done a 3x3. Three three. But I'm so tight to the freaking exhaust. I don't know. It may have worked. A piece of 3x3 three three may have been better. Because as you see here, this side, I had to notch all three sides. So I'm basically counting on it to sandwich it totally. And clamp it in there. So I'm going to give it a lot of ugga duggas. All right, let me get back at it. Step one, when you plan on actually welding on your truck, disconnect your negatives. Both of them, if you have two batteries. Disconnect those, because you do not want any of that welding current flowing through and getting to these components here. Get your computers fried. Or anything else it might fry. But yeah, disconnect. course down here on this edge you only get about half engagement so did a little bit of cardboard aided design cut some triangles out these things are quarter inch mm, what I put in there is what eighth inch maybe 16 to 3 sixteenths I don't know where'd that piece go either which way so the gusset there has two functions one to be a gusset to tie it in better here but two if you leave this open that kind of creates a hook that if I'm sliding over something off-road, I don't want it hooking on there. I'm debating whether or not to put some flat stock here to provide more of a ramp. I don't know. I think it might be okay just like this. But it's definitely welded all sides. These things are in. I assembled one of these barrels. So I'm only messing up one of them. And that way I can check. Ooh, that's still warm. I keep checking as I go. This is probably the tightest of all of them. I beat it into, into place too, but those tabs and everything have come from this little kit. It's actually two kits, a, cry, a transmission cross member kit from Barnes Four Wheel Drive. Look them up online. They've got all kinds of builders parts and bumpers and diff covers, all kinds of cool stuff. But this little kit with all those tabs I welded on the bumper, all these barrels that you can, that's what you would do your tube work in for your cross member. Comes with all the grade 8 hardware, the polyurethane bushings. Alright, got them bent up. That took a lot of figuring and measuring and guesstimating. Pretty sure what I'm going to end up with is going to be what I want it to be. You can see the marks where I'm going to cut the ends off so I can get my 15 and a half. So it's 15 and a half from center of this to center of this. And I'll have the hoop coming up off that. Alright, if you're questioning getting yourself one of these affordable benders, it's kind of a depends question. 
weak point that I am a little worried about is it's just a grade 8 bolt going through there for the strap. And that bolt was bending. So I'm not sure how much of an issue that is. This 8 ton jack, it starts actually collapsing actually more this way as it gets further into the radius. And you can definitely feel when it bottoms out. If you, you go past that point, you got problems. It's going to cause you some issues. But uh, looking at what they've built here, if you do have problems with it, they've put this bolt in here, tack welded the nut on, but that's what holds the bottle jack portion in, so you can replace this thing if you blow it out, which is what kind of had me worried. I mean, it's just four bends I've done this thing. I don't know. It's, it's an affordable bender, so it's not, it's, it's not going to be anything you're going to want to use every freaking day, but for getting the four bins I need for this project will do all right, and the next bins I want to do on the next project, it should be all right. But it's just figuring out seven inch radius, how much does it take up? You know, and I, I did the first bend here as a test, and then decided to go with it, and figured out just off that test bend how to get down here and get the bend I want there. So for me, a lot of trial and error. Those of you that know how to bend tube, you'd probably be a lot faster at this than I would. But as far as birthday presents go, I'm pretty happy because there's no way I'd have bent this tube otherwise. But it's, uh, it's still a crap ton of, of labor to do this. But for under 500 bucks, inch and three quarter die, another die of other sizes, they're about 160 bucks each die set. So you, know, you can get into it for about 500 bucks and then I think it was under 500. Either which way, look it up online. Amazon's where I got this from. And I'm fighting this and starting to make those look ugly. What I'm fighting here trying to keep it generally in line with the truck it's almost as if I need to cut it has a lean to it this one leans that way so this one seems straight but this one definitely has got a lean that seems straight in relation to the truck what it makes me wonder is do I need to cut out a little bit more in between here and then that will pull this in. That's my next attempt, because I've tried several different things and it's all frustrating the piss out of me. I'm sweating my bum off.
right, there are two things I will be the first to admit from the top. One, I am not a professional welder. I'm an amateur. And so yes, quite a few of these welds will qualify for what my older brother, the certified welder, would call bird droppings. Quite a few of them are good, but that's the way it goes. Two, I should have found a way to press out those polyurethane bushings. I smoked a couple of them. And for this application, I don't think that'd be a problem. If you're doing it on suspension, that would be a problem. For this, I doubt it, because this is only going to move when you're taking the tire down and up. But I've got most of them done. Several places I did double passes, because one of the other amateur mistakes I made was I did not switch out my notcher for inch and three quarter when I started doing these ones. I had it on two inch, because that's a two inch DOM piece of tube, still warm, and this is one and three quarters. So I did these with a one and three quarter, or with a two inch radius to be able to match up to those better. So I thought. Didn't really work as well as I might like. But these ones are nice and tight. And what I forgot to do with them was bevel the edges. So I ended up doing multiple passes. Another little trick, you got tube and you can't get the clamp to hold onto the tube. You don't have a big enough clamp. You do this. And then I'll grind that off and grind it smooth with a flap disc if I can find my flap disc. Yeah, among these welds, I wish that this one, the worst of them all, was on the bottom of the tube. But it's not. It's up top. So, yeah. It's one of those things. And a lot of this is remnants for when I tacked it, pulled it off, tacked it, pulled it off. As I was trying to get the proper adjustment, as I was trying to line up this top hoop the best that I could, I just had tack after tack after tack. Lesson there is, grind those tacks off, then try again. Take the time to do that so you don't get this globular mess that I've got everywhere. I did a little better down here. There's still... I got the penetration it needs, so it's going to hold. It ain't falling off the truck either off-road or on the highway. The next part I have to do, you see I've already got the cross member cut, is I've got to figure out exactly where the center line of the tire is going to be at. And I want to leave just enough room. You've got to deal with this radius down here. So you're dealing with the radius, which means the tire will be more, bottom of it will be up here somewhere. Now, two, two, two lines of thought I've got on this one. As I go ahead and burn that one in where it fits for a 35 inch tire and then someday when I do jump up to 40s then I end up cutting and grinding and doing something new and different. Um, this tube being 120 wall is thick enough to handle that kind of stuff later down the road. For the next three to four years it's going to be a 35 inch tire so my thought is build it for a 35 inch tire. Which means I'm going to pull the spare out, <clears throat> pull out the markers and start marking and measuring and figuring this whole piece pretty warm. I did try to stitch weld and jump around a whole lot so I'm not dumping too much heat into one part. The next little hard ship here is to figure out did I warp anything in doing this. Um, before I started burning and cutting obviously I have the square out. I was checking the square and all the different things and the eyeballs are full of me. That doesn't fool. So there's some things that are in square and some things that are out of square but the biggest thing is do those four points match up back here to the bumper where they're supposed to reside. That's the key. So I think I'll do a test fit like that and then I'll pull the uh, pull the spare out and figure out how how this mounts in here, where where it mounts I should say. Alright, enough yapping.
prepped for paint. I didn't film any of that, but wiped it down with xylene to break off a lot of the grit and grime and oil. And then after that, shop towels with Windex to get it totally clean, or as clean as we can get it without any much more. Um, rear bumper going to give it a whole new coat, so scuffed everything down. I have some rosin paper laying around, so I use that for my masking. It's There's the nice thing out. about your Duplicolor Bedliner rattle can stuff, is you just scuff over the old stuff and you put a whole new coat on. This time around, I am going to go over the aluminum, make it all black. It's kind of what I want in the first place. That aluminum is a nice touch and all, but not really my style. So we're going to do that. But any of the bare steel stuff, I'm going to hit with Rust-Oleum self-etching primer. And this whole thing, obviously, the whole thing gets Rust-Oleum self-etching primer. All right, there it is, fogged over. Not complete coverage on everything, just the bare metal stuff like the aluminum or the patches or the mounting tabs. Those things have all got good coverage. The rest is just kind of fogged on there. It'll be fine. One side of this, good two, three coats. You can see it's still flashing off and drying. I'm also getting the eye works. You can see where I'm going with this, that I'm going to use that same factory tie down to be able to strap the tire to it. Should work just fine. If not, then I'll go get myself one of those plates from, uh, oh, Barnes Four Wheel Drive is selling some multi wheel pattern plates for studs and stuff like that. You can bolt them on down that way. I might, but I'm kind of hoping this does the trick because I do like the little Y bar that it gets and the hook and that tightens it down good. Alright, there it is, all blackened up. I think those patches blended in, at least in this light. In the sunlight it'll probably look different. Maybe be able to see them, maybe not, I don't know. I think the bumper's pretty good. I've got a couple coats on it. And that's the thing, is if you don't get enough coats on it, you will get bleed through of rust and everything else. The primer will give out, whatever. So you do want three to four coats on it. I did take the time to redo this entire panel here. There's the spare tire carrier all blackened up. So we'll have to flip it over to get this point and those two points there. But I wanted this to be the best finish because that's the stuff that will show the most. So. Yeah, as soon as this all dries, I'll give it several hours to dry. This stuff ends up being kind of a very highly textured plastic type coating. It's pretty cool. I like it. I've been using it for 20 years. But it should do this trick. This will be my third truck I've done the quarter panels or the uh, rocker panels on with it. And it takes pretty good abuse. But yeah, I do. I do like it all black and no more silver. That is what I'm doing. I have my doubts as to whether or not this will be sufficient. If it's not, I'll fix it. If it is, I leave it. But you can see I oversized this enough that I should be able to get a 40 inch tire. A 40 inch tire would be another inch wider. But I've also got enough space I can put two roto packs on these things if I just get the extension. And you can see I just went to Tractor Supply, got some quick release farmers type pins. Those stay bolted. And there we are, there's how the truck's gonna work. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with it so far. That don't look good. <clears throat> Those things don't clip in so well. But yeah, this texture coating from Duplicolor's come out pretty nice. 
I think in the future I may actually pull all this back apart and do raptor lining, but well, one of the things I was looking at is Genrite actually sells a pin that is locking, and I may do that. And the fun thing about it, if you have that locked, it means nobody's swinging these doors open either. But so I may do that in the future. I may order that from them. It was like 40 bucks for it, but those pins, and I like this style of, of retention pin better than a regular cotter pin. That one ain't coming out no matter what happens to it until you actually undo the spring. But for both of those pins, actually I got three pins and three of the retentions, cotter pin type things, whatever they are, for 15 bucks versus that one from Genrite that would be 39 bucks. But there it is, my version of a tire carrier for a Suburban. Hope you got something out of this. Appreciate you watching. If you've come this far, we'll catch you on the next one.